Today, we will be learning about a restorative material that has been the subject of much controversy regarding its safety. It's time to take a closer look at amalgam. Let's go through some key terms we should know when we talk about amalgam. Firstly, what is amalgam? Amalgam is an alloy which contains mercury. Now, you may be wondering what an alloy is. Simply put, an alloy is a metal made by combining two or more metallic elements, especially to give greater strength or resistance to corrosion. Now, the technical definition for dental amalgam is an alloy that is formed by reacting mercury with silver, copper and tin, which may also contain palladium, zinc and other elements to improve handling characteristics and clinical performance. This definition tells us all that we need to know about the composition of amalgam. Mercury is a liquid at room temperature. When metal particles are mixed with mercury, the outer portion of the particles dissolves into the mercury. At the same time, the mercury diffuses into the metal particles. When the solubility of the metal in mercury is exceeded, crystals of mercury containing compounds start to precipitate within the mercury. Simply put, you can compare this process to adding sugar to water until the sugar stops dissolving. During this period of reaction, the metal particles coexist with the liquid mercury, giving the mix a plastic consistency. This basically means that the mixture can be adapted to any shape with light pressure. As the content of liquid mercury in the mixture decreases, the mixture hardens. This process is called amalgamation and this material has been used for restoring tooth structure. The first use of amalgam for tooth filling was recorded in Chinese medical literature in 659 AD. Before these alloys are reacted with mercury, they are known as dental amalgam alloys or alloys for dental amalgam. They are usually provided as either irregularly shaped particles produced by milling or lathe cutting a cast ingot of the amalgam alloy or as spherical particles produced by atomizing the liquid alloy in a chamber filled with inert gas or as a mixture of both lathe cut and spherical particles. Let's have a look at the classification of amalgam. It is now customary to classify amalgam alloys as either low copper in which the copper content is 5% or less or high copper alloys in which the copper content is 13 to 30 percent. In both types, the major components are silver and tin. In modern dentistry, the low copper formulations have been essentially totally replaced by the high copper formulations due to the improved strength, corrosion resistance, marginal integrity and overall clinically proven better performance of the high copper ones. The powdered amalgam alloy is composed of irregularly shaped particles produced by grinding an alloy ingot on a lathe Microspheres of various sizes produced by special hot spraying techniques or a combination of the two, which is so called admixed, where the composition of the two types of particles may or may not be similar. The irregular lathe cut particles are made from an alloy of silver and tin, where the ratio of the two elements approximates the intermetallic compound silver stannine. These are typically used in the admix alloys. The spherical particles may contain either mostly silver and copper and be used as the second component in the admix alloy or they may be more similar to the lathe cut particles in composition and contain silver, tin and copper. The admixed regular alloy contains 33-60% to 60 spherical particles that have a composition close to the eutectic composition of silver copper. The balance is irregular particles. The silver content of the unicompositional spherical alloys varies from 40% to 60%, the copper content varies from 13% to 30%, and tin content varies from 22% to 30%. A high copper admixed alloy is also available in which both spherical and irregular particles have the same composition and the copper content is between 29 and 30%. Admixed alloys are overall more popular than spherical alloys. In general, alloy composition, the particle size, shape and distribution and heat treatment control the characteristic properties of the amalgam. Along with silver and tin, Another important component of dental amalgam is zinc. It acts as an antioxidant which means it minimizes the formation of metal oxides during the melting of the alloy. Now that the composition and classification of amalgam are clear, we will discuss the amalgamation process which basically means understanding how the dental amalgam alloy and mercury mix and react. All dental amalgam alloys have silver stannine as their primary component which reacts with mercury to form a silver mercury compound, the major matrix phase of the set amalgam. The amalgam alloy is mixed thoroughly with liquid mercury in a process called trituration. During this process, the mercury initiates a reaction with the alloy to form predominantly a silver mercury compound AG2HG3, known as the gamma-1 phase. 
This phase acts as a matrix to hold the unreacted amalgam alloy together. While crystals of the gamma 1 phase are being formed, the amalgam is relatively soft and easily condensable. It is also carvable. As the time progresses, more crystals of gamma 1 are formed. The amalgam becomes harder and stronger and it is no longer condensable or carvable. In high copper admix alloys, additional copper has been typically supplied by adding spherical particles of the silver copper alloy to the silver tin alloy. Therefore, while mercury is dissolving mainly the silver and tin in Ag3SN, as described earlier, very little of the silver copper particles are dissolved. However, some of the tin and copper that are dissolved by the mercury react to form a copper tin compound Cu6SN5, referred to as the eta prime phase. It is the presence of this copper tin compound that gives high copper amalgam better corrosion resistance and strength. ADA specification for amalgam alloy contains requirements that help control the qualities of commercially available dental amalgam. The specification lists three physical properties as a measure of amalgam quality, compressive strength, creep and dimensional change. The minimum allowable compressive strength is 80 MPa for 1 hour after setting and 300 MPa for 24 hours after setting. The maximum allowable creep is 1% and the dimensional change between 5 minutes and 24 hours must fall within the range of minus 15 to 20 microns per centimeter. Let's see what each of those properties means. Compressive strength is the resistance of a material to breaking when a compressing force is applied to it. Creep is a time-dependent deformation at an increased temperature and at constant stress. Dimensional change is the increase or decrease in the volume of a substance due to diffusion of molecules from the surface of the substance. Although amalgam has been a highly successful restorative material when used as an intercoronal restoration, it does not bond to the tooth structure and therefore it does not restore the original strength of the clinical ground. For large restorations, features such as pins, slots, holes and grooves must be supplied to provide retention. However, they do not reinforce the amalgam or increase its strength. With the development of adhesive systems for dental composites came the opportunity to attempt to bond amalgams to the tooth structure. Bonding agents containing 4-meta, an acronym for 4-methacryl oxyethyl trimelitic anhydride, have been the most successful products. However, it is important to remember that amalgam does not chemically bond with the tooth structure. We all know that proper isolation is a must for using restorative materials like composites because moisture contamination can cause improper bonding. For amalgam, isolation plays an important role in the success of the restoration because if the amalgam alloy is contaminated with moisture during trituration or condensation, then a large expansion of the restoration may happen after 3-5 to five days. This is called the delayed expansion of amalgam and it happens because hydrogen is produced by a reaction between zinc and water and it causes a rise in the internal pressure of the restoration thus causing an increase in size over time. It is also called hygroscopic expansion. The latest statement by the International Association of Dental Research on amalgam is as follows. The policy statement concludes that current evidence affirms the safety of dental amalgam in the general population in the absence of allergies or severe kidney disease. While supporting the phase-down approach, the IADR emphasizes the need for increased preventive efforts to reduce the need for dental restorations. The statement also highlights the need to develop new, biocompatible, environmentally friendly restorative materials with longevity and cost effectiveness comparable or superior to those of amalgam. Some patients seek to have their amalgam fillings removed due to unfounded health concerns. The IADR concludes that fillings should not be removed except in the case of allergies. Now, let's recap what we have learned in this video. The technical definition for dental amalgam is an alloy that is formed by reacting mercury with silver, copper and tin and which may also contain palladium, zinc and other elements to improve handling characteristics and clinical performance. It is now customary to classify amalgam alloys as either low copper in which the copper content is 5% or less or high copper alloys 
in which the copper content is 13 to 30 percent. In both types, the major components are silver and tin. Along with silver and tin, another important component of dental amalgam alloy is zinc. It acts as an antioxidant. All dental amalgam alloys have silver stannin Ag3SN as their primary component, which reacts with mercury to form Ag2Hg3, the major matrix phase of the set amalgam. This is also known as the gamma-1 phase. The ADA specification lists three physical properties as a measure of amalgam quality, compressive strength, creep and dimensional change. It is important to remember that amalgam does not chemically bond with tooth structure. Delayed expansion of amalgam happens because hydrogen is produced by a reaction between zinc and water and it causes a rise in the internal pressure of the restoration thus causing an increase in size over time.